What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm talking about the most powerful four-cylinder engine from Toyota in recent times. So now, when I say most powerful, I'm not really talking about power output like horsepower or torque. I'm just saying reliability, stamina, strength, ruggedness. You know, this is an engine that's been in use since 2004 and it's used in like five, six, even seven Toyota models. Toyota rugged model, not even just normal models, and it's a very reliable engine. Maybe I should have used a better word instead of powerful, but please manage my powerful for now. <laughs> and this engine is the 2TR engine. The 2TR is a 2.7 liter inline 4 engine. Contrary to how people think we have V4 engines in cars, we do not have V4 engines. We have inline 4 or straight 4, you know, 4 in a straight line, unless it's boxer then it's horizontally opposed. We'll talk about all that some other time or see my video on engine configuration to understand boxer and inline and V and W properly. <laughs> the 2TR is an inline 4 engine. It has dual overhead cams. It has 16 valves. That is 4 valves per cylinder. Some cars have 2 valves per cylinder, some have 3 and some have 4. 2 not so common anymore but at least 3, 4 are still very common. And the 2TR engine was introduced by Toyota to us in 2004. The 2TR produces 158 horsepower and 182 pound foot of torque. So the 2TR is used in a number of Toyota models, starting with the Toyota Hilux, the Toyota Hiace, the Toyota Coaster, the Toyota 4Runner. In the 4Runner, it was only used in 2010 for the rear wheel drive version, not the four wheel drive version of the 4Runner. It's also used in the Tacoma. It's also used in the Toyota Fortuna as well as the Toyota Prado. The 2TR engine is mounted longitudinally. So it sends power straight from the engine to the transmission down to the differential at the rear with the help of the propeller shaft. So in case you didn't know, car companies use the same engine in a number of related models. And in relation, you can see that all these cars I mentioned come with rear wheel drive or four wheel drive options. And one of the reasons why I call this engine a very powerful engine is that imagine it's used in the Hilux. The Hilux is a top seller for Toyota and it's a very rugged car. And for the 2TR engine to be able to power it all this while, it shows that there's something special about this engine. It's very rugged, very durable, and it lasts long. An advantage of using the same engine in a number of related models is that now parts will be available. You know, it's going to be the same ignition coils, same spark plugs, same injector nozzles, and things like that will be used in the same engine. So if you drive a Prado, and you want to buy ignition coils, you can actually buy the ignition coils for the Hilux because it's still the same engine. So things like that make it easier for the manufacturers to supply us with parts for cars that we're purchasing from them. Also, bear in mind that as much as they can use the same engine in different models, a particular model can have five, six different engines as well. So don't think because I said that, okay, it's used in the Prado or it's used in the Hilux. Like if you now see another Hilux with different engine, you'll start calling me and harassing me. Because we have Prados and Hiluxes with 4 cylinders, 6 cylinders, different engines. So you just want to understand that these auto manufacturers use the same engine in different models. It doesn't mean that those models cannot also have other engine options. In 2015, the 2TR was updated. So now it has dual VVT. Initially, it had only VVT. Now it has dual VVT-I actually. So that is variable valve timing with intelligence. And now it produces 161 horsepower and 181 pound foot of torque. Yes, it's one pound foot of torque lower than the previous one, but I believe Toyota knows what they are doing. And as I said, these cars are rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. If these cars were not rear wheel drive, the engine would have been transversely positioned. To understand what I mean by transverse and longitudinal positioning of engines, please see my video on engine positioning. I'll also put a link in the description below. Another thing we should note is that as much as it is different engines, in different cars, it can have different power outputs. And these engines also have different variations. So those are things that we'll get to understand with time. You might be wondering, why am I making a video about engines? Or what's your business with engines? Get on the car channel. You will just have to start absorbing all these things gradually. And luckily, I'll be giving it to us little by little. So I'm not going to overload or saturate us with car knowledge, we'll just take this gradually. And any word that you're not familiar with, so any new word I use here, hang around. I'm sure I'll make a video about it. I've probably made a video about this in the past. So just go through my channel or 
hang around and I'll make another video explaining what those things are. I want to get you guys to the automobile literate. So anything I talk about, I will still make a video to explain them in the long run. And by the way, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ayo Loves Cars. See you in the next video.